So this video was supposed to come out last week, but I was really, really ill. Like I could barely hold myself up and I spent most of the week napping on the couch. So um, I'm feeling better now and let's do this. So welcome to a slightly late style study time. And I'm really excited for today's video because we're covering the one, the only, Esben Lash. If you're part of the Instagram community, you probably already know who Esben is, but in case you're not, don't worry, we'll go really deep into his work today and look at all of the amazing things there is to learn because there are like a million of them. This video has been requested twice, so massive thank you to Ail Needs Surf and Jonathan Jr. Panita3815 for requesting this video. I really hope you guys enjoy it and that it's everything you've been looking for. If this is your very first style study, hi, welcome. Here's how this works. Style study is a regular series we do here on my channel where we take a look at some of our favorite contemporary artists, analyze their work and see what we can learn from it. Keyword, learn. We're not here to plagiarize anyone's work or copy their style. We're only here to see what we can learn from it and apply to finding our own unique art style. I usually structure my style studies in three parts. In part one, we'll take a look at Esben's work, analyze his style and see what we can learn from it. Part two will be a study of one of his original paintings. The reference I've chosen today is this one. And in part of three, we'll apply everything that we learned today to an original painting of our own. If you enjoy this video and learned something today, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. And of course, all of Esben's work is linked down in the description, so make sure you go check him out after. But yeah, if you're ready, grab a snack, sit back and let's dive into another style study featuring Esben Lange. Espen Lash Rasmussen is a senior illustrator and art director from Copenhagen, Denmark. According to his schoolism page, Espen has always loved to draw and he grew up indulging this interest before attending the animation workshop in Denmark. He then went on to work at Six More Vodka Studio. Esben currently works at IO Interactive, but has previously worked as a senior illustrator at Riot Games. His portfolio has loads of amazing pieces he has created for Riot, my personal faves being the ones he's done for the League of Legends franchise. His incredible work has garnered him over 145,000 followers on Instagram and over 16,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Esmond specializes in stylized characters, at least with his personal art. These are usually human, but you'll often see other more high fantasy concepts peppered around his IG feed. I especially really love how he exaggerates certain aspects of the face in order to tell the character's story. We'll look a little deeper at this in a sec. Looking at his splash art, however, you'll notice how extremely dynamic and just straight up grand it looks. Like seriously, do you not feel immediately immersed into the scene? So today we're actually going to do two halves of the analysis where we first look at the individual portrait style art that's on Esben's Instagram and then we'll look at the more video game splash art style of work that he has on his main portfolio. Cause look at it, you feel like it's 10 feet tall even though it's just a digital image on your screen. It's like Esben is a digital muralist. Speaking of this, here are four key characteristics to Esben's art. Let's hit the ground running by straight away looking at how Esben stylizes faces, at least in the single character portraits that have little to no background. What struck me was that Esben stylizes these characters in order to explain their personality and story as opposed to making them look more conventionally attractive. Let's start by looking at this character, which is one of my favorite examples. 
Here you can see she has an extremely rounded face to the point where even the nose has been elongated and curved as if it forms the edge of a three-dimensional sphere. So she is definitely not a character you'd put down as the super athletic dynamic warrior type. The lines around her eyes, by the jowls, and on the neck are just simple lines, but they age her quite a bit. Plus, the expression in the angled eyebrows and the pursed lips tell us she is in a fairly surly, upset mood. All of this we get just by looking at her face. Now let's try this character. There is still an aged look here, but do you see how different the shape language is? Here the face is elongated with a wider jaw and nose. In fact, the front of the face is really quite flat. You see a lot of forehead wrinkles, smile lines and creases around the eyes, but the angular bone structure still shows some youth. So this character is weathered from hard work outside as opposed to just age. What's interesting you'll find is that in Esben's work, there are very few actually round shapes, despite things looking soft and rounded. The eyes are the perfect example of this where we usually see rounded shapes, but Esben chooses to go with short angular lines instead, and the roundness is implied by how the lines are positioned around the imaginary sphere of the eyeball. The eyes are generally fairly high on the face and far apart, with a flat nose bridge in between. In the more masculine faces, the eyes are even made to look extra small, which to me feels like the opposite of softer, rounder stylization that we usually see in popular character design. Most importantly, however, Esben always paints the face to be very planar. Be it a simple sketch or a fully rendered portrait, you will see very noticeable shifts in the plane of the face. Here, for instance, obviously there are heavy shadows that create a high cheekbone look, but there's also solid plane shifts in the smile lines and around the chin. These aren't very rounded, over-rendered transitions, just little flat shapes of contrasting value. Here you can see how the brow bone ends on a harsh edge of highlight, which then abruptly turns into a mid-tone for the temple. I really love this aspect of Esben's work, because not only is it such a cool look, it also makes the face extremely readable, even at a quick glance. Let's look at the rendering in these simpler portraits. While a lot of the faces, particularly the monotone or grayscale faces, are lit by singular, diffused light sources, it's the more dramatic ones that intrigue me. Like this one, for instance, as you can see, the vast majority of the face is hidden in the shadow, while you have a narrow light source hitting the character from one side or sometimes behind. For obvious reasons, this is incredibly dramatic because most of the face is in the shadow and as vision dependent creatures, we find this very intriguing since it is hidden information in the face. However, what's interesting is that Esben doesn't necessarily paint the shadow to be quite shadow toned. Let me explain. Here's a portrait where it looks like most of the face is in a soft shadow, while there is a small light source illuminating just near the cheek, a bit of forehead, and a little bit of the neck. It is dramatic because, again, most of the face is in the shadow. However, look at the actual values in the shadow. Those are really close to the highlight values. And if you look at the grand scheme of things, neither are the highlights super bright, nor the shadows super dark. They're all very safely within the mid-tone range. So why is it that the values seem so dramatic? The answer, my friends, lies in the contrast, but not in the way you think. Sure, there is a value contrast between the brightest highlight and the darkest shadow, but let's consider value zones instead of individual values. So instead of just looking at one highlight color, let's look at the cluster of highlight tones. 
So here I'm going to colour pick around where the light source hits the skin and these are the values. And then let's colour pick in the shadows of the face and here are those values. So yes, there is quite a contrast between the light and dark tones, but what's more interesting is that there is fairly low contrast within the highlights and within the shadows. So not only do we have a value contrast, we also have a texture contrast going because similar values make things appear smoother. So essentially, you're really only working with two values. And so even if you don't see hard edges that explicitly divide light and shadow, Esben still makes it very evident which areas are in the shadow simply by playing with the contrast. Okay, let's switch tracks and talk about the more detailed, fully fleshed out illustrations that Esben has on his portfolio. As you can tell, the one word that perfectly describes these incredible scenes is dynamic. In fact, you'll see that Esben often tends to almost bend reality in order to make paintings more dynamic. Like with clouds, for instance, this scene would have been way less dynamic if the clouds had just been regular old clouds that go straight across the background, but do you see how he's painted them to spiral around and lead to the characters? In fact, you'll find an absolute plethora of leading lines and their shapes indicate the speed of movement. So we know that the fastest route from point A to point B is a straight line. Straight lines indicate very high speed. So in a painting like this one, all these radially blurred light elements really force us to feel like this character is in an incredibly fast paced scene. Same here with these diagonal lines, which imply the entire scene is in motion. However, Esben will sometimes also slow it down by using curved leading lines instead. Like here, where although the scene is extremely dynamic still, the lines that lead to the character are all curved. So while it isn't a static composition whatsoever, the motion is a little gentler, a little less frantic. There's two ways I notice in which Esben indicates the focal point of the scene. The first is the incredibly bright light source that lies behind the primary character or object of focus for the story. Here it is the pink moon illuminating her hair and casting a rim light on her skin, suggesting we're meant to focus on the beauty and the elegance of this character. Here the sun is shining right behind this character's giant sword. Here the scene is less about the character himself and more about the weapon that he wields. The other way in which Esben brings our attention to the focal point is by making it the most highly saturated element in the scene. Here, the most saturated thing is this metal glove, suggesting this is a character known for their hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. But here, the highest saturation is in the pages of the book, suggesting this scene is all about what this character discovers in this book. Every aspect of each painting is carefully chosen, and that is just such a brilliant part of Esben's work, the thoughtfulness. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned how Esben's splash art is just straight up grand. It's like you are basically thrown into the scene and I think I've figured out a couple of details that create that effect. First, there is atmospheric perspective and lots of it. <laughs> Look at this piece. Sure, there is that haze that pushes those lighter clouds into the background, but there is also some of it that is around the edges of the face as well as the hands and the far leg. So even things that are supposed to appear closer to us because they all form part of the same character appear way far off due to atmospheric perspective. As a result, this character feels absolutely massive, making it incredibly impactful. 
Here you of course see the haze behind the character, but what's more interesting is that there is also a little bit of haze at the bottom of the foreground, and yet the top of the character doesn't seem hazy at all, she is crystal clear. It's almost like the character is towering over the atmosphere itself, making them seem even taller and therefore way more threatening. Another interesting detail, and this is more about the composition, is that the character almost always takes up around a third of the scene or more. So here you'll see the character and his staff take up the middle third, while this character is spread across pretty much half the scene. Again, making them look way larger than life, while the scene around them appears to be regularly sized. You'll often see little particles of light or just random floating shards, which add movement that breaks up these large shapes, but the simplest subtle touch is the black vignette. More often than not, you'll see at least one edge of the image that has a dark gradient leading out of the scene. It's that vignette radial gradient, but doesn't necessarily cover all four sides of the image. This really pushes the foreground into the shadow, thereby adding even stronger depth to the scene, really putting the cherry on top of the immersion of it all. So to sum up part one of this study, here are the four key characteristics to Esben's art. Number one, the facial proportions are exaggerated, not to make the characters conventionally attractive, but rather to tell the character's story and describe their personality. Two, in dramatically lit portraits, the majority of the face is in shadow, but Esben plays with the contrast in such a way that we perceive a strong shadow without losing too many details. 3. The splash art scenes are incredibly dynamic and often use a bright light source and high saturation in order to drive focus to the key element. And number 4. Through the use of atmospheric perspective and the relative visual weight of the character, Esben creates grand, immersive scenes that make you feel like you could just step right into them. For our study today, this is the reference I've chosen. I realised I don't paint rough masculine characters too much, so this was the perfect challenge. And I mean challenge, because I painted this and immediately fell ill after. Am I saying this painting made me ill? No. But am I saying Esben should mail me some paracetamol? Yes. Okay, focus switch. As you can clearly tell, this study was tough from the very beginning. Not just because of the proportions, which were obviously hard to replicate, but also because the lines that you see in the final piece felt more like aesthetic lines to me, as opposed to structural lines that would have held place features in the sketch. You'll see me constantly go back and forth resizing and rearranging the facial features, just trying to match the original. The big issue, I think, was how well Esben can convey subtle emotion. So instead of having a very loud scowl, this character had a little furrow of the brow and a slight grump overall. Now add to that the complexity of a dramatic light as well as a full beard and you see where my issues lie. With a basic, semi-acceptable sketch in place, I went ahead and started to flat the colours in. This was not super hard because I had the reference open in a pure ref window to colour match with, but it was at this point I realised something very important about Esmond's style of rendering. It relies very heavily on a gradual build-up of values and colours and shapes as opposed to being something you can replicate on a one-to-one -one basis visually just by looking at the surface level tones. I had to do several liquefy passes through the process, just trying to get as close to the reference as possible, but man was it tough. 
However, it was a massive learning experience when it comes to shape language, especially with the far side of the face that is hit by the secondary rim light. Like the rim light doesn't just follow a smooth skin surface, there is loads of nuance, some very complex shapes, and it is all just a really fun process of using flat 2D shapes in order to imply three-dimensional form. The hair, while made up of several small shapes and taking quite a while to paint, was probably the easiest part of the process, mostly because the shapes all followed a rhythm and pattern of flow. The clothing, on the other hand, was my least favourite because it was the exact opposite. There were several different textures, overlapping details, and several value changes, so uh, yeah, I procrastinated the clothing until I physically couldn't. Anyway, after some more liquify, some tweaking of the lighting and colours, here's the finished study. Not my proudest end product, but definitely my proudest painting process so far. Okay, this has been a long video and if you've made it this far, please enjoy some quality footage of my fluffy boy doing fluffy boy things. Are your eyes rested? Okay, let's go ahead and create something original from everything that we learned today. To start with, I actually made this sketch in my physical sketchbook and to be honest, this felt way easier than starting digitally like we did with the study. There is just something so organic about the lines that just work better with pencil on paper. I pasted that into Critter and refined the sketch, trying to focus more on that subtlety of expression. With this piece, I wanted to convey a sense of envy in a very internalized way. So while I wanted her looking envious, I also wanted there to be a tinge of sadness in there. Plus, just to be a little wild, I gave her green skin, a color almost always associated with jealousy, and also a color that would complement the red hair nicely. I used several face references to try and match Esben's style, and since we did a dramatic study, I thought for this one we could have a more diffuse single light source. I actually really enjoyed adding hints of red and yellow to the skin, and just the overall process of painting the skin here. With the hair, I found that using lots of little brush strokes gave me the beautiful textures that I needed since Esben usually paints hair to be a lot rougher than the skin is. I started by placing in very basic indicators of the shadows and the highlights in each section of hair and then simply colour picking and creating shapes that follow the flow of the hair. After a lot more colour and contrast adjustment, some more liquify and even more adjustments, here is the final painting, Envy. And there we have it, Espen Lash Demystified. I really love this study because there is so much that I can personally take away and apply to my own art style, but what do you guys think? Are there any aspects of his work that I've missed out? Which of these aspects will you be taking and applying to your own style? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I have all of Esben's work linked down in the description below. Make sure you go check him out and show him some extra love for me. And if you've enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out so, so much. Come say hi on socials, and if you'd like to support all the work that I do and just this channel in general, you can check out my Patreon, I'll leave a link up here. I put up all of my complete speed paint, all of my art, all of these videos ad-free, as well as my extended brush pack for all of my patrons to grab. So um, that's up there. Also, if you just want to grab the brush pack and not be a patron, 
Patreon now has like a shop feature, so I've got that activated as well. I'm having a little bit of trouble with payouts from Gumroad. So um, yeah, if you want to grab it, you can grab that without becoming a patron. I don't know why you would, but you know, the option is there. <laughs> the link is up here. And thank you so, so much for your support. Are there any other artists you'd like to see a style study on in the future? First, check out my style study playlist. I'll leave it down here somewhere in the outro. Um, I've done these for literally years and I've done a ton of these already. So chances are I've probably covered some of your favorite artists on the series before. But in case I haven't, feel free to leave a comment below. Or better yet, come tell me in my Discord server, where by the way, we also have a Halloween challenge going on. Um, link to my server is down below, come join it. <laughs> but yeah, let me know which artists you'd like to see a style study on in the future and I'll add them to my ever-growing list and that's everything I have to say today so thank you guys so so much for hanging out with me I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have check out some more style studies down here and I'll see you guys on the next one bye